the last hangout of 2017, Lady Ada. Jingle bells, what show is and tells. I think the um, show, show, the jingle show. the jingle bell songs are over. You have no, to do, it's not Christmas. You have to you have to do like the Happy New Year thing. Yeah, I don't know. Happy New the, Year. I think that's the song. Okay. Yeah. Happy New Year ish almost. Well, we're in the brackish period between. That's okay. Everyone's hanging out at home. Maybe you got vacation. You got some time to work on your projects. Maybe you're hanging out with family and building projects together. One show and tell. Show it off. We're here till 8.50 or so. Or 7, sorry, 7.50 or so until we got to go do our next show. But we'd love to see what you're working on, what you're crafting, making, 3D printing, hacking, taking apart, scanning, electroning. All that good stuff. Okay. We're going to start off with no Pedro. We'll just uh, call on people, show off your project in a couple minutes. All good. Hi, hey, guys. folks. Hey, everybody. Been lurking the past couple of weeks and joined everybody's projects, but just wanted to run through some of the things you missed uh, from the last couple of weeks. Sure. You want to start? Yeah. I think we stopped at the little dock for the Circuit Python. Cool guide video out for that. You can check out the AdaBot uh, 3D printed enclosure for that using the wood fill. Uh, per uh, PT suggestion, looks, yeah, really, looks really good. Yeah, nice. I got uh, the wood going on and a bunch of different prints as well. It's always good to kind of revisit some materials that you don't use that much. Also got a layer by layer that's launching tomorrow and how to do modifications to it if you want to use a different Yeah, arcade. some folks were uh, wondering why the button wouldn't fit on it. It's because we used a different button, so. I know. Yeah, it's just an opportunity to kind of make a little tutorial on how to use Fusion yeah. 360. Mm -hmm. OK. Cool. And then it was on purpose. Week. It was yeah. on purpose. <laughs> sure, strategic. So I uh, spent a lot of time reworking my uh, camera slider. So this is the original camera slider with a couple of updates. So now it's on. It's uh, supported by these two aluminum extrusions and a lot of more brackets so that it keeps the belts nice and tight so it no longer has an issue with grinding. So the way I'm using it is so I got the stepper motor right here. And this guy in the center is a standalone sort of panning uh, motor. So it has a motor inside of it. And it's something you can buy off the shelf. It's called the Genie. And so what you do is as that's panning, it's sliding. And as it pans and slides, you get this really nice effect. So if you see on our YouTube channel, we have two videos up uh, that both show uh, this guy in action. And for the camera, I'm just using a GoPro uh, Hero 5 which has some nice uh, 4K time-lapse video mode, so I don't have to worry about stitching a bunch of photos together or speeding up a very long video because it's really the best with, um, you know, like an interval of like one second, maybe five to ten minutes of shooting time. Um, and that's pretty much the, the update. More mechanical than uh, anything updated to the electronics. It's pretty much the same, turning off a of Metro, uh, and the, the BLE SPI friend. So that's a future project that's coming out, uh, I believe, next week. So if you guys want to check out some cool stuff, check out, of course, the YouTube channel. We have some videos up there. All right, sweet. Okay. Thank you. And thank you so much, Noam Pedro, for an epic year of videos. You betcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot. And projects. Yeah, yeah. More. We'll do this again for another few decades. <laughs> I hope so. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Scott, do you want to? You want to go yet, Scott? Yeah, might as well. OK. I'm still in the process. But the uh, thing I wanted to show is a lot of you know I like to have lots of projects. For those of you who have asked me about the toaster oven reflow oven, I uh, don't because <laughs> I haven't worked on it. But I'm starting uh, having another project anyway. And uh, I picked up this mega NES, which is also known as an old actual NES, not one of the new classics. And uh, what I was doing is I was actually taking the screws out so I can take the lid off. Um, it's actually broken, so don't. I, I would have had to take it apart anyway to fix it. Um, basically, the games don't start up. And the culprit is that, looking online, I suspect, is the, the cartridge loads in here, and there's a, a big. Um, connector that runs along the back edge here. And the error message that is happening, like an LED blink, seems to happen when that connector is damaged or dirty or something. So uh, I thought it'd be fun to just take it apart and, and show it off on show and tell. Um, it's uh, 
I don't even know what year it is. They sold a ton of these, I think, but it says it's an NES 001. I guess there's a top load version you can get to, uh, but those are rare. Um, I picked it up when I got rid of my circuit, or not circuit, uh, Chickadee Tech extra inventory that I had, so so I won't have it next year. So blowing on it didn't work. <laughs> and in. All right. Um, yeah, so that's uh, another thing that I will be working on in my classic spare time that I don't have. Maybe after uh, 3x beta comes out or something, I'll take a little break and do some stuff. OK. What we'll do is we'll be like, the next build has to run on a classic NES. Then you'll just then you'll do it. Well, I was thinking it, <laughs> the things that were interesting to me was like, because I only have one game, I do have controllers and stuff, but I don't have a game like, um, they have cartridges that you could load games, game ROMs onto, basically. So I was thinking, like, that sort of, like, hybrid, like, use the classic system, but also supplement it with extra stuff would be really cool. Like, I also don't have, like, I got Duck Hunt on this cartridge, but I don't have the Duck Hunt, hunt gun. So, like, maybe I could actually, like, reproduce the peripheral. Yeah. Um, and figure out how to, like, maybe have Noid Pedro 3D print some sort of plug to go in there. Which would be right. cool, too. Coming soon, Circuit Duck Hunt. There you go. All right. Okay. All right thanks, Scott. Next, uh, Phil. How's it going, Phil? Hey, Phil Moyer. Hey, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> we can hear you. Show off your project. OK. Um, so I wanted to give an update on Leica, the rover project. Um, I'm to the point of actually building the platforms. Um, it has seven Raspberry Pis on it, um, nine MQ series gas sensors, um, a bunch of other environmental sensors on it down here. Um, and a 24 to 5 volt buck converter. Um, I'm building it on a maker beam frame. And that's the other platform, which will have four Raspberry Pis. There's just three on there right now um, that are running OpenCV for hazard recognition. Um, and then there's going to be a mast in the center of it with a LiDAR system. Um, and the, the interesting bit about this is the people at Microsoft found out about it, and they're all excited now. And I have uh, basically a program management job because um, there are six people that want to help with it. Um, <laughs> one, one, one of who has, who has, has a master's in robotics. Oh, wow. So, so uh, I'm making good progress here. OK. Uh, I hope to end up running by summer. Wow. All right, congratulations. And you got some um, fine. Um, we've been really impressed with, there's groups within Microsoft that have been doing some really neat open source stuff, stuff with the Raspberry Pi. We've been doing stuff with MakeCode. So um, who, who's ever there, put it in the suggestion box. That they, keep it up. OK, we'll do I don't know if they have a suggestion box, but if there is one. All right, thanks so much, Phil, and happy holidays. Thanks, Thank Phil. You. Happy holidays. All right, next up, we're going to go to Sally, because I think she was dropping in and out, but she's here now. Hey, Sally. Hey, Sally. Hey, how are y'all? All good. Oh, good. OK. <clears throat> I have a project that's not quite finished, but it, it, it's working. It looks like this. Whoa. That's cool. That's a happy hat. It's a very happy hat with lots and lots of stars on it. Um, and sometime in the spring, I'll probably start wearing it. Um, not right now because it's too cold. Um, but it's a Gemma M0 and some NeoPixels and a bunch of stars. And I've had a lot of fun with it. So, um, and it's part one of a four or six part project. Oh, wow. Boy, OK. okay. okay. Right. Well, you can collect up to like four show and tell stickers, okay. multiple <laughs> appearances on the show, and then eventually Ice Planet Hoth will fly out, and then you can wear it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Are you using it with Arduino or with Python? Uh, it's Arduino this time. Okay. I'm not as familiar familiar with Python. I'm working. No, I'm just on curious. It. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, let's see if, if people are people trying. I mean, it'll work with Arduino really nicely. So it's yeah. definitely. It just it makes work. the thing is it's they're white. The LEDs are white or flashing white. Mm. Um, so. Which seems kind of a waste of the NeoPixels, but the colors underneath fit, disappear. Yeah. Um, 
So I want programmable sequence. <laughs> it's what I want. No, look, it's basically it's the same price. That's the thing. It's like it's like yeah. the price is the same. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks for right. stopping by. And thanks for all your projects this year. Happy holidays. Thank you, and the same to you right. and to everybody else. Okay. Okay, Colin just came in. Hey, Colin. Colin. What you got going on? Hey, guys. How you doing? Yo, yo. So, like, years ago, uh, back when I was first making videos for a little while on the internet, a guy sent me a synthesizer. A guy I never met sent me a synthesizer, a big old analog synthesizer, and uh, for free. Uh, it was really cool, and I was like, thanks, guy. Uh, it was really nice of him. Anyway, it's a Profit 600 synthesizer. You can't see it in the dark. Here, I'll turn the light on. Sequential Circuits Profit 600. It's the first synthesizer that had MIDI capabilities, which is cool in and of itself. Um, but I just recently, when I was taking it out, I cleaned all the switch contacts, I was refurbishing it and such. I found that someone had written new firmware for it. And you can take out the old Z80 digital controller. This is like one of the early ones that first had presets. And you can take out the old controller and you can pop in a Teensy Plus Plus that is programmed with uh, Gleegly is his handle, uh, this guy's firmware. And I did the mod, it was really straightforward and simple. I'll just show you the actual innards of this thing. So, y'all can see that here on the board. Yeah. If I open it up, you the fancy inside right there. Just like a up. nice circuit board. Pulled out the Z80. Yeah, it's, it is a really beautiful board. I don't know how much you can see here, really. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely board. It's a little hard to manage to show you the rest of it. There's some beautiful curved traces and everything, which you know I'm a fan of. And uh, it adds a bunch of new capabilities, but it keeps all the old uh, warm analog sound of it. So I'm quite happy with that simple upgrade. And there is now a learn guide on the Adafruit learning system where you too can mod that Profit 600 synthesizer you have sitting around, I hope. There were a lot made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like back in the 80s, from like 82. So it's really cool. And hope maybe someone will make for more other synthesizers, which we'll see. Okay. okay. Thanks for the update, right. Colin. Sure. Scott got okay. this taken I'm gonna apart. Okay, we're going to go to Ryan and then Ani, and then we're going to wrap up with Adam. Hello, Ryan. Hello, everyone. Um, so this is just an update on my thermometer. This is the older one, the non-logging one, but now I have uh, the logging version. Um, and it's rechargeable. Uh, and then I'll give you a... Do it has circuit? Nice. Yeah, um, but I'm going to show you my screen for a sec. Um, to show the the data, so it is logging. Um, I don't know if that came up, but this is this is a plot. I I I need to. Th I think I need to add a debounce to the button because I, I get too many values logged. Um, but I'll have a uh, I'll have a guide coming soon for it. Looks awesome. All right, okay, nice work. We'll keep coming back and showing this. And if you want to show and tell us for the in progress. Let us know, support at Cool, thank you. Good nice stuff. work. Okay. Ani, how's it going, Ani? Hi there. So um, what I what I did was um, I took a four spin and I allowed it and I allowed it so that whenever I uh, push, which is when you do something like this, the song on my Spotify playlist, I have uh, IFTT settings all set up. Oh, neat. You go to the force, you go to the force band app, and you go to force control, and you have to have audio on for this, otherwise it won't work. So, mm -hmm. and you gotta click the button that says use the force, and I have to do the force push. Yeah. If you can. All right. So mm -hmm. the force push is sent. So any second now, it'll play a song. Okay. See, it's open up. It works. When I we just yeah. saw we just saw the Last Jedi, and that's exactly what Luke did. He was playing music. 
He was jamming his, out with his iPhone 12. Yeah. Yeah. Last iPhone. Outstanding. All right, nice work. All right, cool. That's a way to get into the force um, push. <laughs> Well, um, you can either, what did Luke do? You like rem remotely, trans uh, we can send you a, a scene on show and tell sticker. We can we can send it by Millennium Falcon. Yeah. I'll drop it off. On Email sport at we'll send you that one. Thanks, Annie. All right, great. Down. All right, Adam. Playing. Uh, What's big? What's small? Uh, it's big stuff today. No, no, no well, maybe a little bit of small stuff. We'll see where we go. So uh, this thing sat for a little bit because my shop was, literally freezing. Uh, there was multiple times when I came in here and it was covered in dew because moisture and the air and freezing weather is really bad for this thing. So uh, I don't think you can see it, but in the back corner now I have a pellet stove. We got that installed and the shop is warm enough to run this thing now, which is great. Like before it was getting really iffy when you would turn it on, it would come online, but some power supplies wouldn't quite power up correctly and then it, just badness would happen. So I had to leave it alone for a while until I got shop heat. Got shot, Pete. I came back to turn it on, and lo and behold, there's a vacuum leak. So we're <laughs> right back to square one of this machine. I saw that in the movie Martian. You're, <laughs> yeah. It, it, this is just like being on another planet. It ain't so bad. Um, no, it's a, it's a the the less life and death, which is always great. Yeah. But uh, so started uh, got on my stream last night. Got that back online too. Uh, thank you for Wirecast, by the way. And started uh, troubleshooting it, and it came down to a single piece of dust on this one gate valve right here. So when you're doing a sample exchange, you use this rod right here with a uh, sample holder, and you push it, here, let me close this, and you kind of push it through here, and there's an airlock, and this valve opens, and you can put it in. That way you don't have to vent your entire chamber whenever you want to exchange your sample. And one single piece of dust got caught on this gate valve's O-ring and was enough to make it so that it couldn't even come close to achieving the correct vacuum. But getting to this O-ring is actually really hard, so it involved taking quite a bit of the stage apart. And once I had half the stage apart, I realized that there's other problems with the stage. Like the, um, I couldn't actually reach half of my X Y or of my X Y coordinates with this because the uh, there's a misalignment on the control knobs for this. So I figured out how to take apart these incredibly sensitive Mitutoyu uh, stage movement devices. Uh, took these apart figured out how to realign them, spent about an hour and a half just figuring out how many turns to spin it to align it. Because you can't just take the part off, set it correctly, and then put it back on. You have to unscrew a really big portion of this to get to where you align it. But then when you screw it back in, that changes everything. So you have to figure out exactly how many turns you're, it takes to reassemble the unit and then offset any adjustments you make by that number of turns. So that was a, a whole big guess and check process that took uh, Oh, oh, over an hour on the stream, but I thought you're done. playing a game called Mist. There's like puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shockingly good description for what's for what's been going on with this thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get the stage put back together. Um, I got a, uh, I got a little bit of time, so I'll show you a pretty interesting photo. Um, if you remember a while ago, I had the AMG eighty eight sixty six, so the the uh, grid eye thermal camera on. And we looked at that under my electron microscope, but I recently got a chance to go play with somebody else's electron microscope. And their microscope has a really cool feature called EDS, so Energy Dispersed Spectroscopy. It actually uses the x-rays coming off the sample to figure out what the sample's made out of. So we can see here an SEM image of the, uh, of the sample, so we can uh, see what I thought was the thermal couples doing the measurement, or the ther basically a, a grid thermal pile, that's a grid eye. But what this does is this very special SEM actually makes an elemental map of uh, whatever you're looking at. So if you go here, we can see, once again, we get the electron image. But we can also see just where all the aluminum is in this thing. So any, anywhere there's a red dot is somewhere where the, the X-ray spectroscopy unit detected uh, characteristic X-rays of aluminum coming off or detected characteristic X-rays of nickel. So we can see that the paddles are a lot of nickel. And then we got some uh, some oxygen doping on the nickel. Uh, we can see we got a, kind of a lot of silicon in here, so we can uh, because I mean it is a silicon wafer chip, so you would expect that. Uh, and then we can see some titanium. The titanium is generally used to kind of help the aluminum adhere to the uh, sample or to the base. And we get a chart here of the percent returns of the different elements. So it's, it's a very very powerful instrument having this EDS system and. Uh, I actually, in theory, 
keyword in theory, uh, will be able to do this. Let's see. Stop sharing, please. Why won't you stop? There we go. It stopped. Um, in theory, I'll be able to do this, uh, but it takes a lot of liquid nitrogen and a couple more control devices to be installed on the stem. I have almost all the parts I need, but there's one very specific PCI card I'm missing. Um, and trying to find a PCI card that was made in very small quantities sometime in the year 2000 is going to be interesting. But hopefully, I'll find it. The um, it was the stem was supposed to come with one, but it accidentally got recycled. So that's fine. Send me um, send me text and a photo or anything. I'll put it up on the blog. Yeah. Okay. We'll put the flag out. Someone will someone will be like, I have like a warehouse of those. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's always how it ends up. Yeah. But no, there's this, this one guy in Maine who built this thing, who built this interface card at some point in the 2000s. So it's a little bit of a specialized piece of hardware. But other than that, it's going good. Hopefully, I'll get some images from this thing again once I get my stage put together and start having fun with it. Yay! Okay. Outstanding stuff. All right, welcome back. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been an, a year. I wouldn't do it over except for the half an hour every week called Show and Tell. Yay! The best part Rest of, of it, maybe year. not so much. Um, Colin, can you play us out with some 70s tunes? I'll see what I can do. Okay, Scott has this thing going. Mm -hmm. Everybody, we'll see you on Ask an Engineer in a few moments. Thanks for making 2017 really good. Let's make 2018 better. Thanks, anymore. everybody. I don't know. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.